Hi, everybody. So today we're all together, Steph and Shanti and Julianne and Scott and Elisa, and we are doing hidden history. And a lot of this stuff is channeled stuff from my higher self. So I thought we have new followers. So I thought I'd reiterate. So a lot of information comes from my higher self. A lot of information comes from everybody else's higher selves as well, because they're tapping in and tuning in. And we're going to talk about some of the pictures that we've been showing over the, you know, life of the hidden history group. And I want to tell you where to find this. So basically, if you go to honeyseagolden.com, you can find um, like all the written stuff that's come from most of the hidden history, not the most recent, but most of it. And then also there's a link there to the playlist. So you can actually watch hidden history as well, one after the other. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to explain some of the things that um, we haven't talked about for a while. So here, can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. So a while ago, I don't know, probably a year ago at this point, I got that the earth was a toroidal field and that we live in this dome up here. So basically there is, let's see, this would be the top of earth. And this is where we live inside this dome. And there has been, I don't know what else to say about it, except there's also an inner earth. If I can find that picture, probably not. doesn't look like it's there. Um, and also there's been a reincarnation wheel so basically when people tried to get out, they got stuck. So this is a reincarnation wheel. This is the edge of the dome. And we had a portal that we could actually get out and go to Mount Maru and go through our, um, what do you call it? Like the life review. So we would go through the life review here and then we'd be able to go somewhere else. Well, instead, the bad guys put this in there so that everybody got redirected right back into the dome, which was very uncool. And this is basically how Earth functions. So this is the toroidal field of Earth. And inside is a beautiful crystal. So basically, we are living on the toroidal field of this crystal. And within this earth, there are many layers and there are other whole other um, societies that are living in there. So there's the sixth density right in the middle. So, you know, basically right where the crystal is and that's all crystalline. So it's just filled with crystals. There's not a whole lot of greenery. It's just mainly crystals. And then on each side of that is fifth density. And there's going to be like very manicured lawns, beautiful trees, crystal cities, kind of like a fairy tale. And then on either side of that, on the top and the bottom, there is fourth density positive, which is think about Lord of the Rings style. So that's what's going on inside of inner earth. So going back to our dome, this is a picture of the dome from the top. So we have an ice wall here. This is where we've been in the middle here. Antarctica is this blue. So basically people should have been able to get to this hole here. That hole is the portal to leave the dome um, to reincarnate but that was like stopped. So, <clears throat> and then this outside of the ice wall and in between the dome and the ice wall were all these other continents that were hidden and the elites would have their parties there. They had a lot of their homes there. That's where the greys were stationed. So when the greys took over the dome, 
they would live, most of their stuff was out there, their technology. But Elisa has some amazing news about this ice wall that I'd like her to share. I do. Um, uh, a lot of our um, brothers and sisters has been paying attention to this, and I'm sure they can remember um, that I was told that, you know, the first 3,000 miles of it came down, and then the next, you know, I was told that 9,000 miles of it had come down, and then I didn't hear anything for a little bit, and then about uh, close to a month ago, they actually uh, showed me that the entire ice wall is down, and uh, I am very proud of my brothers and sisters that has uh, raised their frequency to make this happen. It was no easy task considering it's 100,000 feet high and it was 10 miles uh, thick. Uh, somebody asked me, you know, why it would be like that. I said, well, that's a guarantee, my friend, but it is down now. And I am very proud of all of us that came together to, uh, to make this here happen. And so I'm, um, I'm speculating. Uh, I'm not going to speculate. I'm going to say that I, I'm thinking that somebody in a plane or a cargo chip is going to look out there and say, wait a minute, that shit ain't right. <laughs> so, and then that would probably get the ball rolling. I'm not saying that that's how it's going to be, but that's my logical thinking is that somebody out there close to that is going to notice something different. So, mm -hmm. so thank you for letting me tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. so yes. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm so glad we get to share that. And then I did a reading and I recorded it and forgot what it was. So Julianne wrote it down. I did. It. Were you going to show the picture of that scepter thing or no? Yeah, let's do that first. And then yes. um, we're going to talk about frequency right. and energy today. So basically free energy. Let me see if it'll let me do what I want here. I know you alluded to that in the tune in. Yeah. So uh, let's see, maybe this, this, this is a good picture. No, that's not, let's use this one. Okay. okay we're ready. So with her tune in, she, it's about frequency and everything will be made of frequency in the future. So we have, a, a, she had the picture of the scepter, which is, this is what it's depicting. This does, it collects energy from the ether. So it is healing, but it also collects sound, like collecting sound from the bells. You must know how to point it correctly, however. There is a male and a female end. Pointing the wrong end at someone can cause the life force to be sucked out of them, which wow. can be scary. And it's a, an amazing healing tool as well. The good guys were healing with it and the bad people used it to harm others so they took all the bells down because they were very healing um with in tartaria mm -hmm. so think mud floods and so they you know we're removing them we are moving to a frequency-based system we will know what frequency people are in and we will be able to tune into the um tune the healing forks see we will let me talk, we will know what frequency other people are in and we will be able to tune the healing for forks and we will be able to um or the apparatus to retune them so kind of like playing an instrument the healers will be able to see it and know it inside themselves part of their previous knowledge and will be able to administer this healing in a very quick way not as fast as a med bed would but we can retune ourselves essentially heal ourselves fre frequently all of this frequency stuff plays a part um, in the machines we use. The machines will be less clunky and more streamlined. Instead of little computer brains, it will look almost see-through. Um, think an imprint of what the computer brain would be. It leaves um, like a residue. Example, think of your stove in the kitchen. That residue will run that stove. It will be an imprint, imprint from the original. Creating things will be very easy, like a hologram inside the apparatus you are using. They will be able to change themselves. So the matter that makes up a stove, for instance, can be changed into something else by giving it a new imprint. It could, it could morph into a refrigerator with the imprint, which is, which, um, is the program. This is fifth density technology. Now we are moving into fourth density positive. 
but some of our technology will be more advanced beyond our expectations. This will grow over time. Computers will not be seen. There'll be a, quote, sheet of glass, unquote, with the imprint within them. To look at the sci-fi movies now to, is, is to understand what our technology will become, and it will be advanced beyond that. So. Thank you. I could almost read my writing. <laughs> it was good. I'm just glad you wrote yeah. it down because I didn't. <laughs> <clears throat> She was the backup plan. <laughs> you know, well, I was that intending to do well. myself, I didn't. So, but um, to think of basically, you know, I could say I never was into sci-fi before, but now I'm going to scramble to look for sci-fi. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, look at some of that. Yeah, there's cool. a lot of movies that tell us exactly what we're going to have available. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But, but, and it, all all eras really are all uh decades right or is there a, a whole bunch more here was there a certain time period that it's more so um i feel like the ones now that are coming out like it just looks better in the movie but i feel like <laughs> they've already addressed it in some of the old stuff too right. hmm. yeah. okay Got better better uh special effects so I, I looked up the rate, the um, the actual term frequency, um, just to get that base understanding, because you know everyone gets kind of confused with stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's the rate of recurrence of a vibration. So everything vibrates. So frequency is just naming the the rate of recurrence, basically, in a vibration. Yeah. And Hertz is the scientific name for frequency. Yeah. That makes sense. That's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, then I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. When you say a vibration, everything is vibrating. But if you're going to be more specific, you can talk about a frequency. Right. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going into the we're in a quantum universe, but we're going into the quantum, like that's how we're going to operate now, mm -hmm. which is frequency. Yeah. 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 Will we all yeah. be able to work with matter or will there be specific people who specialize in that? Um, I feel like eventually, yes. But at mm -hmm. first that will be somebody's gift and they will have that first. Whereas others, their gift may be telepathy or like they might have a different gift at first. Yeah. Yeah. But eventually we'll be able to mani just manipulate matter. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Through frequency. Through frequency. Yeah. yeah. Just like yeah. you guys remember, um, I don't know if you've ever heard the story about how all those stones, like the Machu Picchu stones and the um, pyramids and stuff, they actually move those stones with frequency. Mm, so yes, with sound, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually being a, a handheld um, technology is almost like a shoehorn and you hold it and whenever you grip it, it, it gives that frequency out and you can actually raise and lift heavy things. So it's actually, it's small and it actually can do something like that um that would take you know a lot of uh, uh it would be a benefit to us because we didn't have to lift heavy objects so it makes better sense that's how they did that with the pyramids and so forth or in the old tartarian buildings um all over the world you mm -hmm. know i mean they did have 14 and 20 footers helping them do that but imagine having that kind of technology it would be done very quickly so that's the reason why i say you know there's no they claim that they built the city in two years there's no freaking way no you know so. and, all, and all those things are doing is matching the frequency Mm -hmm. to the object mm -hmm. exactly so mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to this new technology yeah well, tesla had a device like that where he he's a handheld device and he he basically i heard, read a story of where he he placed that onto a steel structure in the city and it started to vibrate and it was like the, the workers were starting to you know basically wonder what the hell is going on with the the vibration and it was basically on the verge of destroying it just with this small device handheld device like mm -hmm. no doubt the same sort of thing where it was just 
you know, matching the frequency and um, it's just showing you just how powerful, you know, how, how easy things were to manip- are to manipulate. We just haven't been haven't been shown or taught that sort of stuff. And yeah, right. like moving heavy rocks and the pyramids, no doubt, were built using those technologies, those sound and you yeah. know, technologies for, for for matching the frequencies. So that makes a lot more sense than yeah, you know, the scientific okay. explanations for how they move these blocks and you know, by by hand and yeah, just never, yeah. never really made a lot of sense at all. I know, and yet they make a struggle whenever there's something that could make it so mm. easy, you know. But mm. yeah, are there frequencies that are not recommended? Like, for example, they used frequency to create the liquefaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Is there are frequencies that are kind of like. Banned? There's a lot of frequencies that are not good, right? For us necessarily, mm-hmm. they um, frequencies that will scatter the internal systems of a body yeah um you know obviously mess up the land turn it into quicksand Mm -hmm. i like that scepter having to point it right the right way you just have to be able to use your frequency the right way the Mm -hmm. um the thought of this you know like your machines and stuff with the imprint you know a stove and then it turns to into a refrigerator now okay so you can do that then how is that different from the uh, replicators that we're going to have is that it's, that's a different thing well you it? don't need a replicator to do it so uh-huh. basically it's just frequency that changes it so it's not a whole lot different than what a replicator does but it's almost like beyond what a replicator does right because it another would just case, need a little imprint to change another case in point why we won't need to have a bunch of stuff Mm-mm. we won't need right. stuff Right. At our fingertips or at our whim or at our frequency, whatever, we got it. That's right. All in one applause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do, 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 do. Now you see it. <laughs> now you don't. Right. So with yeah. with the bells, were they like so they're obviously all different sizes, so they sent out a particular frequency. Mm-hmm. So do you see they were used for specific things depending on size and yeah, so what I get is that in a city, they would have lots of different bells. Yes. And you would go, like, the, you knew which bell you needed to go to for which kind of issue you were having. Mm-hmm. But oh. if you were in a smaller place, they would have more of, like, a universal bell, I'm getting. So, like, more of a multi, that will heal a lot of different things kind of bell. Like, the best frequency for healing in general. Like would they would they ring them at certain times? They would ring them in the cities, but I think it was mainly just the general bell they would ring. Okay. But then you'd go and like a smaller bell would be for a certain thing. Like I don't know what it would be for, but say you well, had a, a different pitch. cramp in your leg yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And they would know, hey, you need to go over there and go get rung by that bell. <laughs> you know, that like- just as far as musical instruments go, and they were particularly popular, like in the churches and different performances where people had like the bells, like they, each one of them had a, a certain thing. And they would do songs with the bells. Mm-hmm. So something like that too. Um, what about um, like using the triangle, you know, and hitting the triangle with the noises that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. I don't, yeah. I feel like it was like, uh, I don't think it was bad for anybody, but it was kind of a random thing. Like it didn't really relate to a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Like yes. healing wise, like they had already lost the knowledge when they created that triangle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Do the like bells that. we have today, like Big Ben and these massive, you know, world clocks, are those are those bells chimed in a bad frequency? <clears throat> no, I get that they're the old bell, um, but they're not. They're not. It doesn't last long enough. The sound doesn't last long enough, Beep. so it doesn't really do anything for people. Like they so would have had different. to really ring hmm. long periods of time. Um, I wonder how long like 10 to 15 minutes solid of the bell ringing. It's hard to imagine being in the presence of these bells 
the, given the, the the volume they can probably get to. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to imagine that, like, you know, when you heal, if you're going to use it for healing or if you're going to go to an isolated, I presume they're going, you're going to have to be isolated to some degree with that particular frequency. Otherwise, if you've got right. these different bells for different healings in, in the, in the, in the town, for instance, not going to all, you can't have them all ringing at the same time, different times. It'll all just, right. you'll just mix no. into a, a, I feel like the biggest it, ones are the more general ones and then the smaller ones they would have them in other places too where they would sorry uh, is that what the bell towers so so you're in a cylindrical so the sound resonates down yeah yeah, yeah well and those work. those things would pick them up those little right. what's it really called oh. stephanie you have the name yeah. uh the varja georgie Okay, so I'm going to just show that. Vajra Dorje. Vajra Dorje. And um, I'm going to explain it a little bit, what I've got. The okay. center is a small, normally a small flattened sphere, which is said to represent the underlying nature of the universe. And this comes from Tibetan kind of knowledge and wisdom. And... Um, then the, each side represents a male or a female. There's also a, um, what's the flower? The lotus flower is on is usually on the right next to the, the center point. Oh. There's little things that are coming out. Those are the lotus flowers. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, they typically usually had five prongs, which uh, represent like five wisdoms. And the one side was the five wisdoms and the other one was a five. I couldn't remember what the other side was, but the other side was like the five um, fears or, or something like that. And um, they were symbolized the properties of a diamond, um, indestructible or a thunderbolt, irresistible force. So um, that's what they used in history, used by Zeus. You will find um, images of Zeus, and you can see other ancient people in in these images using them as well, and Indra. But um, I'm I'm was wondering if it was related to the toroidal field, and obviously it is. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I it didn't say anything about using it in one direction or the other, but that makes sense, of course, and. Uh, so, but it's funny how this image shows like the toroidal field of it and how it goes out. So that was really interesting. Right. Yeah, one side takes from the from the oh, subject the, and one gives. Uh, one side is five poisons and the other side is five wisdoms. Oh my God. Nice. <laughs> nice. Wow. Was that would that be to do with the five elements at all? Do you think in some way does that sort of correlate with the five elements? Mm -hmm. or the plasma? Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. Frequency. It's a very alchemy type tool, right. and I think it was used along with the bells quite frequently. Right. There wasn't mercury in it at one point, was there? I get there might have been red mercury in there. Because mm -hmm. the, the I think that was part of how it like moved things around that mm -hmm. distributed yeah. to it for the energy. The free energy towers all have mercury in them. So mm -hmm. maybe that's. Yeah. yeah. And it was the red kind, not the regular. Right. Isn't there a red one? I don't know. I think there is. If, if you look up scepter, you won't <laughs> find this particular item. You have to look for the Vajra, V A G J, excuse me, R A, V A J R A D O R G E. Because if you just look up scepter, you're going to see just staffs and um, other things that were kind of like related to the false history that, and mostly connected to, with the royals. They thought that was their little symbol of power. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah um and i also also wondered if like the ankh 
was related to some of that. Mm. The onk. Similar. I get it's similar. Yeah. Doesn't do quite the same thing. What does no, the onk no. look like? It's got the um, kind of sort of circle on the top and then the straight down. Right. I can't remember if it has. It's just a cross with a hump on top. But uh, what did I find about the onk? But is it an energy tool? I don't know. I want to look at it. Um, right. Well, they show it's, the um, kinetic. Like that. What yeah. I found about that was the kinetic womb of mankind. Oh, yeah. The alpha and the omega come together. It is definitely an energy tool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so here's a necklace that's an onk. Yeah. Yes, that's the onk, yeah. I used to have a ring like that. Yep. Yeah. Wow. I have more information yeah. too about bells. Okay. When, when did you get that they were first taken down? I feel like right around when they were taking, when they were deciding to get rid of the cities. Mm -hmm. So the cities had sunk right. because of the mud flood, which was basically turn everything to quicksand so it became liquefaction i guess you'd call it and right. then after that they were very disappointed that they didn't get rid of everything so they got rid of the bells like they took the bells out before they i don't really want to say the rods and then of god right <laughs> so basically laser beamed these buildings and they blamed it on fire but these buildings were made of stone right but I think they took the bells well, out right before they destroyed those buildings. Yeah. That's what I'm so getting. when I did research on that, it said um, they took them out after World War One, hmm. mostly, which would be like 1915, 1917. Right. Uh, and they took 44% of the bells out of Nazi German Germany, wow. melted them down and turned them into ammo and armaments. Wow. So yeah, I, I actually get it was cool. before that they took them out before okay. right. so that history is wrong too then mm -hmm. well we had found out that that um second mud flood and all that stuff happened in about what 1897 i think it's because when in 1893 they said it was yeah. four years ahead of us so about 1893 that's whenever they started prepping all this stuff and then by 1915 and stuff you know uh they just went bad shit crazy and just started destroying stuff but uh the bells be, they did have a very good frequency to them. It's based on how thick they are and so forth as it radiates down. Just like they manipulated our music from 432 to 440, the modern day bells have been manipulated the same way. They don't have the same residency or the same frequency whenever you hear them in the churchyards and stuff like this here. It's because they wanted to make sure those bells that were tuned and frequency perfectly for that, didn't. we didn't have access to that no more. So. Yeah. When they took those out, did they move the good bell? I mean, the ones that they didn't melt down or repurpose or whatever, did they um, save those good bells? And are they outside of the don't? Uh, I feel like a lot of them were smashed. Really? They did destroy them. Right, yeah. Melt, uh, made there are maybe a few so, yeah. left, like underground somewhere, like underground, buried. Yeah. 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 Um, These scepters sort of devices you're talking about, for lack of a better word. Um, <clears throat> Were they like a household item for everybody? Or like, were they reserved for the for certain people? Was it a certain class of person? Or no, I feel like the healers had them, so oh, they didn't think. trust the regular people to not hurt themselves. Right. So it would be like, I mean, they would have been the doctors of the day, yeah. basically. Like doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just another. But there were a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. And they actually like what I'm seeing now is like they had like shelves. So you were supposedly a doctor of the day and you'd have shelves of them. So one after, so there were lots of them and they would use them for different things. Mm -hmm. different what about houses. the quad one? Like you, like I sent you. So which one? The quad one with four. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel it was a display model that didn't actually work right. 
Mm. Wow. So were you able to tune in at all to um, with frequency coming back and being a thing? Are we going to use these same types or are they going to be a upgraded version very different? Like what is to come in the future, what they're going to look like? Are they going to be a little bit more designed differently? They'll Smaller. be slightly different, not as heavy. Okay. But they'll be, we will have something similar, mm -hmm. but I feel like they're going to try and really make sure that we know, like, I don't feel like we're going to, not everybody's going to have them. Right. Well, like you said, it really hurt someone sense. with them. Yeah. Right. Like you said, it makes sense that the people who are in the know and that's their, their, you yeah. know, gift to do that, they'll be, and they'll be accessible. That there'll be other technologies that will be to take there'll be home. There'll a lot of handheld frequency stuff that's not dangerous like those are. Right. Um, because one side's great and one side's not good. Right. Well, I mean, either so, way, it will it will be health and maintenance. It won't be. Well, you can't call today health care. You call it sick care. So it's not going to be anything like that. It's just going to be maintaining and and uh, recharging, maybe re uh, revitalizing you. Mm -hmm. right well, well you know common. before they were made of iron and stuff like this here you know uh, different heavier metals right and going into the future you know um it makes sense and i can see that they actually have crystal bells i was going to say crystals are probably going to be involved yeah because yeah. i like it whenever they put the water in the crystal glasses and they can make music with that so i mean they can do the same thing with these crystal bells and i think that's just phenomenal that we're going from like the stone age iron <laughs> into the the crystal stage and uh, that's just beautiful that's just beautiful so singing bowls you know are healing too it's yeah. just um as opposed to a bell versus a singing bowl i mean you could have put that in the public in and that's more doable than using something like yeah that. it's a lot safer i actually feel like those will be more museum worthy than they're they'll just have other stuff to heal us with they're right. not going to have those claw things you know and the like it's just not going to be a big thing it's going to be handheld frequency machines that are just for good they can't be turned into something that you know could hurt you I, it's almost like it was polarized then mm. And so they had the polarity even in the frequencies, you know, like the good and the bad. Right. <clears throat> and the bad guys were using them for bad. Yeah. It's a lot of nefarious things. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of in terms of bad frequencies, what what do you see is still hanging around and like what would it be well we have the tvs we have all the electronics that put out the wrong frequency right and that disturbs the body and then we have um there was something else the, the bad, towers bad even your lighting the lighting yeah the led oh, lighting is not the right frequency even our electronics that are like the fridge is probably not the right frequency right plus mm. they're noisy which i don't feel is good for us no it's not <laughs> yeah here a constant yeah, like, through, through our, our wiring is wrong as well right the yeah the wiring is not good yeah because uh, i it, it says in the united states it's a 60 cycle per second mm. and it's different everywhere Right. The, the electric field of the earth is a continuous direct current mm -hmm. so that it melds with us. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're sort of one with that, right. but then we're living in right. a, a different, yeah. Yeah. Well, and the free electricity is going to be so different. It will just be constant. Mm -hmm. I feel like just like what Scott's got going on back there <laughs> behind him. Yeah. It, it will be constant and we will have like perpetual motion machines. We'll have that create electricity. We'll have the ether. We'll have a lot of different things. Magnetic yeah, water. <laughs> what were you, what'd you say? 
I said, and it'd be a lot quieter, like your refrigerator, yeah. your vehicle, you know, your appliances and stuff like this here would be so quiet. So, and because all of this here was to made to make our environment have not just bad frequencies, but all kinds of different bad frequencies. So, yeah. Imagine it just being so quiet. You can just stand there and watch your washer and it's just quiet. Ooh, oh, wow. yeah. That? <laughs> so, yeah. It really disturbs your field. Like it disturbs your, your body field. And I think that everything they did was basically directed at your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like the microwaves, you know, those things will be obsolete and no more, you know, because oh, they're yeah. not good for us at all. <laughs> they're really not even good just to heat up water. So the more, the more that we learn of some of these kind of things, every time we hear something new, I think of how amazing we are even here that we have survived this and yeah uh, my goodness yeah and even then you know help educate the masses too or help our brothers and sisters understand this you know just as we are are, are discovering it ourselves so to make it a little bit easier for them because it's just so much to mm -hmm. learn and uh, so i'm just proud to be part of it wow. yeah how how quickly do you see it all changing in terms of those particular things because they must be aware of how detrimental they are to right. us being, yeah the really bad things will get changed out much faster than the others right so mm -hmm. it's just going to be kind of a cascade of switching things out mm -hmm. that will be probably one of the biggest actual industries in the future is getting everything reorganized and outfitted but at first we're going to use our existing like refrigerators and stoves our appliances mm -hmm. at first mm -hmm. i think they will recommend that everybody get rid of their microwave immediately right mm -hmm. um so you can do it early <laughs> get rid of it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, we didn't yep. but, and, and so, but with the good frequencies they probably way outride the bad right so so say if everything suddenly say if the earth is at a higher frequency then is that overriding all of these frequencies yeah it will but they still disturb the field a little bit um i feel like they might have some sort of almost like a sound machine hmm. that you can put on Makes to kind sense. of counteract it part of the time. <clears throat> you won't want to hear it all. I don't even think it'll make an actual sound. Right. Like it'll be too, it'll be the wrong, I don't know. You know how dogs can hear more than we can hear? Kind be of different thing. Like we wouldn't hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it or would or help. It would negate some of that in the home mm. the yeah. home is probably the most dangerous place <laughs> yeah we're yeah. Having different sounds and frequencies and everything so are you saying happening. the homeless are better off is that what you're saying <laughs> no because they probably have a phone in their pocket so that's not good either <laughs> right the homeless probably do yeah. they're better off though technically because we've all got phones too <laughs> yeah phones and appliances and yeah, yeah. that will change yeah. as fast as they can basically Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been looking at electroculture, and you can you can run a copper wire from you can put it in the ground outside, and you can run it inside and put it wherever. So you can just touch it, and that grounds you straight away. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple, rather than going through your electrical system, which is to be grounded. Every house is meant to be, but mine isn't. So right. when I plug mine in, I, I literally fell over. Oh no. Wow. Yeah, I tried, I tried a grounding mat and plugged it into the power socket uh -huh. and it was like, whoa. So you can tell straight away. Right. That's not good. No. No, it's not. Wow. But yeah, copper wire for all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, I bought extra copper wire. <laughs> one, one of the guys in the chat. Like stored. Yeah. 
um, Jerry had a device where you, you can get it on Amazon and you plug it into the grounding point of the power, power socket and you attach it to your wrist and you sleep and it, yeah, it's like effectively been it's grounding essentially in, in mm-hmm. your bed, which mm-hmm. is a cool, that's a great yeah. device. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Stephanie, did you, you looked up those, the uh, um, scepter kind of things. Did you look up to see that they actually had these types of shoes that would help you ground? There's shoes that have metal on the bottom um, mm-hmm. that I saw it like ancient shoes. I didn't look that up, but I've, I've seen it before. The oh. really, really old shoes and they're, they just have all a bunch of little metal yeah. parts on the bottom. I have shoes like that. They make them now. Oh, do you? Yeah, so they'll have like copper. It almost looks like a little button. Uh-huh. So they'll have a copper button where one of your toes hits and then that same, and then it goes through the shoe and then another copper button that touches <clears throat> whatever you're walking on. Cool. Um, yeah. Ground, yeah. So I don't wear them very much, but I should. Uh, well, unless they come really soft and comfortable, I'm not going to wear them either. I have enough problems just standing on my own two feet. So. <laughs> I didn't realize the grounding mats you actually plugged in. I thought they were mostly stone. No, mm-hmm. they're plastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. or rubber. Uh, also, the other thing is, um, and I haven't been trying it out. Like I ground every day. Um, I'm only there, you know, intentionally grounding for maybe ten minutes at the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, lying on the earth. Um, and apparently, if you're doing it for up to an hour a day, it literally cures everything as well. Yeah. So it, it basically the resonance from the, from the earth cures your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a movie yeah. and a book. Like I, I've no. Yeah. 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 Earthing. Earthing. Yeah. This one. That one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. great stuff yeah yeah it's really helped me the last month or so with some yeah <clears throat> with some illnesses and, and ailments in my in my joints and really noticed that it's been incredible and that's been about you know maybe half an hour to 40 minutes on the weekends just out with the kids in the bare feet you know just mm-hmm. just make, make an use of that time and it's made such wow. a difference it's, it's unbelievable that's only 40 minutes half an hour like i said an hour a day that'd be yeah. i can't imagine yeah. the healing you'd get <laughs> right incredible yeah. well i've noticed that animals that have a dog and a cat the dog digs holes and then and lies in it and then the cat goes and lies in them when they, he's not there so they know yeah. they know how important it is and they'll lie there for you know a couple of hours yeah yeah they know how to heal themselves they soak in the sun too mm-hmm. yeah yeah so in the movie earthing that was placed it was in alaska have you guys seen it so what happens is there was a guy that was in a wheelchair and he was earthing and it was like it was so extremely cold and there was snow everywhere so they dig a hole under the house so he can go freeze himself and get under the house and earth. So basically he would go underneath his house in the freezing cold, pretty much naked <laughs> in, the, in the dirt every day. Mm. Mm. And he went from a wheelchair to walking. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. That is incredible. So yeah. I highly recommend that movie. It's very inspiring. Yeah. How, how long ago was that done? Earthing, the movie? I would say it's probably early 2000s. It's a pretty oh, old movie. Yeah. Um, it's something simple everyone can do. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Don't well, even worry about <laughs> Anyone that's can do it. <laughs> yeah. But I, and I, I'm finding that with everything, it's, it's always breaking everything down to its simplest form. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I've known that for a long time. Yeah. yeah, it's original, natural form. Right. Well, I guess oh, I'll just go dig a hole yeah. in my brother's yard <laughs> before he gets home from the hospital. Hey, I made you something. <laughs> <laughs> go lay in the dirt. Yeah, go lay in the dirt, man. It's not <laughs> Chickens, Chickens do that, too. They um, 
take dust baths and just dig their bodies in and mm -hmm. it Absolutely. also removes their bugs so yeah. it's and that's why as a kid when we got to be a kid and we played in the dirt you know we might not have laid in it but we were always touching it and doing something with it yeah. we were it's healthier always, it was good yeah there's so many people now that are like germaphobes right yeah. and They've said that the, the healthiest kids are the ones that live on the farms that are outside and get dirty and like run around with their shoes off. And it's, I've always said that. And now, you know, the, I hear it more and more and understand it better and better because it's, it's yeah. so true. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I used to be definitely, you know, with the kids, especially like, oh, put your shoes on, you know, and they go, you can't go outside without your shoes on. And now I'm just saying, I don't, I'm just encouraging the opposite, you know, and, and even when I go outside myself, I'll have to stop myself from putting shoes on. It's like, no, no, it's like, you're still yeah. breaking that, that yeah. cycle you're so used to. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. as long as you're conscious of it and you know, it's the benefits there, it's, it's such a, you know, you can just walk outside and, um, yeah, if it's if the programming is insane, you just yeah, I still do it, and sometimes I go, what am I putting shoes on for? And then go back inside and take them off, and yeah, make the make the use of that time. Just like uh, for the kids the too, not um, you know, not telling them they have to put their coat on if they yeah. don't feel like they need a coat, don't make them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the kids don't care to have shoes on; they just they just run outside, and it's like you know, it's actually more organic and natural just to allow that to happen, and they don't yeah. care; they love it; they're not really fussed and. Yeah, and you know they're getting the benefits of it on top of that. That's the beauty of it. You mm -hmm. don't worry about it at all anymore. It's just, yeah, way more for their benefit than wearing shoes. I agree. I've been going barefoot for, I know, at least three three years now. Out and Because it's solid, we only get like two weeks of winter, <laughs> if that. <laughs> but it gives me that opportunity to walk around barefoot a lot. And I have absolutely enjoyed it compared to, you know, my entire working career. It was always boots and still toe boots and stuff like that. Yeah. So I understand you got to get used to it. remind yourself, take them off or leave them off, you know? So, yeah. Yep. Well, I'm really excited for all the new stuff coming down the pike. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. And I do oh. think that we're getting close to other things happening. So it's not that far off in the future that this right. kind of stuff is going to get started. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So I want to mention too, to go and look at the telegram channels below and follow them. So right. you can get other news that, you know, can't be said on YouTube. Right. So yeah, I think that's really important and you'll have fun there. Right. Well, I want to add to that. Anybody that was in that, um, uh, souls to soul, uh, group call the other day that was asking me about um, a gentleman uh, that they could, you know, come and join and talk to in a group fashion. This is your man, Mr. Scott mm. is what we call him. And his link and all his information will be uh, in the bottom of the, well, in the description down there, I guess. But this is a gentleman that I was uh, describing to y'all. So please, gentlemen, you know, come on over here. You were looking for a man's group. Well, here's your man. Yep. So. Now the email's there. Just just hit me up on the email or jump on the telegram and DM me on the, the pinned message. And yeah, we can have a chat and you can yeah join the next Zoom. We do it every fortnight. So uh, we just had one yesterday, which was awesome. We've got about 11 in the group at the moment. So it's nice and nice and nice and small, but it's, oh, the guys, it's great. It's great fun. You know, everyone's really getting a lot out of it and, and it's everyone different ages and different dynamics and different, you know, everything. It's just a really great mix and, um, yeah, just welcome everyone to, to to email me. Come join in and have some fun and some open conversation, like-minded conversations. You know, there's nothing taboo, nothing off the table. It's just, yeah, get it out there and um, you know, basically let us know your experiences and and um, no doubt you'll get some really really cool information. And um, it's been a, yeah, it's been a it's been a, it's been better than what I imagined so far. It's been great. So it's only growing and getting better, and the guys are really enjoying it. So feedback's really good. So, yeah, Yay. please hit me up. Definitely. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So, do we have anything else? Is there anything else we wanted to talk about? Um, I'm just going to ask if you could tune in by chance. I mean, you talk about people for generations that, that keep things, you know. Um, and, of course, they've made um, 
from your farm chicks to whatever, they've repurposed all this old stuff. Mm -hmm. and that people have. Would there by chance be anything that is of a frequency? I mean, I know these are pretty old items. Do you think that there's some of that kind of stuff somewhere in an old barn or an old attic or? Yeah, really? there's a lot of it that's been hidden that actually is still so like under the Vatican, um, there's a lot of stuff that has been hidden in the Smithsonian. There's some pockets of it that were just hidden in general. Like I'm getting like, maybe there were doctors, you know, the ancient doctors with all their little, whatever you call these scepter things. Um, <laughs> but they sank and basically it was just sealed up. So there could be whole rooms filled with these things. Well, that even makes me real uh, wonder, like for people who are touring castles and the, the castles of Europe and different places, there might be places in there, they might depict it as a dungeon or these are the old right. medieval. Yeah. In the basement, mm -hmm. in the hidden rooms, there's right. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure there's probably some things that, you know, underneath the Vatican, you know, that, oh, yeah. uh, that you know, they preserve for themselves or whatever, but, you know. Uh, it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> it would shock me. No. If, many, 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 many many levels. if one of us picked up this one of these Vajra Dorjes, would we feel anything or no, you know, figure out how to use it? We would because there are the some around. We Pardon? would feel the power of it, but don't use it because you're not sure which end is okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. The old saying you don't would know which it ends up. Don't point it at anybody. <laughs> exactly. Oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully they're color coded or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Color coded exactly. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. come with instructions. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just you know, don't red feel blue like we're going to use them. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. just figured that you know so, there's going to be you know pockets of that kind of stuff. It has to be you know. If it was that widely used. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, there's probably a lot of it preserved outside the ice wall. Right. Lots and lots of it. Right. And then I think that we wanted to mention a movie. Wasn't there a movie you wanted to talk about, Shanti? Was it V? Uh, was it a movie or like a v. series or? uh i can't remember which one we decided to be v? v oh okay oh yeah v okay uh i haven't got any questions but um i guess well i guess it's if people want to look at it it kind of explains the whole agenda of the reptiles mm -hmm. um slash the other ones yeah <laughs> yeah well the grays really were mm. controlling the reptiles so yeah anyway that's a good one to watch there's so many yeah but yeah. that's been, one that you've we've been, watching been looking the, at lately you've been watching the the more recent one haven't you shanti the 2008 version or 2009 yeah, 2009 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. there's also the original one from yeah. 84, 84, yeah. yeah. That's Which the one the I saw was the original. Yeah. yeah. The original one is where they couldn't get into salt water because it, it was like deadly to them. Is that the one you're talking about? I don't remember. Um, Alien Nation or something like this here. They'd no, come down the same so. kind of concept with uh, V, except that they, they were highly allergic to the, the salt water. So they, I'm not sure. I don't think it's that one. I'm only I'm, I'm still re-watching. It's only halfway through. I haven't come to that point yet, but I don't recall there being a salt water one in V. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, that that's, yeah, I, I'm still, yeah, I can't wait to finish watching it. It's been so well, long since I Well, they weren't in the V movie. That was another series that they used to have. And um, the guy that played, um, my name is Mila Natoya. He, you know, he killed my father in The Princess Bride. He oh. plays the main alien guy in that movie. And uh, and he and what gets them drunk is buttermilk. <laughs> They're highly <laughs> allergic to the salt water because it can kill them. So, but I, oh, okay. I think it was Alien yeah. Nation. I can't remember. I've heard, yeah, I've heard of Alien Nation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That one was really cool. It had a lot of disclosure in it. Mm -hmm. One yeah. of the interesting. Go, go ahead. Go. Oh, I was going to say one of the interesting things with it is how they talk about manipulation of our emotions and feelings all the time, mm -hmm. and how they know how to manipulate us to go a certain way, and the whole soul thing. You know, they they look into what a soul is, and that you can't change a soul. You can't, and they're like, how do we do this? And obviously they have worked out how to extract souls. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, it shows all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's really fascinating. It is fascinating. And there's so much out there that you can see that mm. like, even I was talking about the movie Coneheads. You guys remember <laughs> that? Yeah. 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 that's disclosure there's so when you're watching something that's old or like i mean i don't really feel like there's going to be a whole lot of new movies in the future it's going to be like documentaries and basically what are we actually doing in real life no more but, fantasy. <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh just watching that stuff go at it from fresh eyes go at it as I'm going to go and figure out what they were trying to really tell us about this world. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you have the Truman Show and the Simpsons and Coneheads and the. Well, the Coneheads were back in the early seven or the early 70s as a comedy thing. Yeah. <laughs> Better than not Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, originally. Mm -hmm. Can I ask that? That V, that's your, the TV miniseries was in 83, 19. Okay, that's what you're talking that's about. That's the one. Yep. It was like a, it was like a telly movie, and then it broke into a series after that. Mm -hmm. So a you could, movie. yeah, <laughs> it was like a you know two hours, like I think it was three two hour episodes or something, and then it, then they broke off a series after that, and mm -hmm. every every week or something, a weekly sort of half hour yeah. show. Yeah, hmm. but, it was uh, either yeah. that or the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the middle of college and I didn't have time for TV. Oh, <laughs> with, with, with that series, honey, do you get that the second season was taken over and was kind of channeled the right kind of, I mean, there it's even deeper, deeper yeah. disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because watching the first one, I'm in the second now watching the first one, I was like, there's no good in this at all. But then the second one came along and they started really showing it. Yeah. Like you're saying a, a deeper level of understanding. Yeah. Yep. Mm. That's white hat stuff. And if it wasn't completely controlled by them, then it was, there was also like pockets of information that were given to put into that show. Yeah. And they yeah. took it over, did they? It was originally like a non-white hat sort of series, and they decided the first to series in. was definitely the dark hats, and they were just doing what they always do, like just give disclosure because they think that's permission. Mm. But the the second one, I feel like it was back and forth a lot. So whoever was in charge of that was getting information from both. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have to have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it like like we discovered in in a previous when we did the Simpsons, was it? Yeah. Um, that this information, a lot of it's channeled, so it's not about necessarily taking over. It actually comes through the people who are already creating it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like an an, an implant. Yeah, or even like that voice of um, God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah, fascinating. Um, what, uh, one other. Um, so uh, Rishi, what's his name? Rishi Sun. I can never remember. His name. The <laughs> new, the, the <laughs> new English Prime Minister. Oh, Rishi. Sunak or something like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, 
there's a video that's been going around and he's holding a folder and he walks. So he's holding a, a red folder mm -hmm. yeah. and he walks past a car and then the folder's green. Mm -hmm. Green means so, go. Yeah. Okay. Green means go. And I, I've gotten, when you asked me about him at first, I got that he was under the good guy's control, but he was going to look like a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he, he's a member of the W and E and F. Yeah. So it's, it's a direct in your face, like in the, he's in the 1% cause mm -hmm. he's a multimillionaire. He's a member of that. He's, you know, he's got all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look, we have a new addition. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble Bubble. Her name is Trouble. Ah. <laughs> yeah, and she's big. She's huge. <laughs> Very no. cute. Yeah. Siamese. Yeah. Yeah, she's a lilac family. If you look at her in the light, she's uh, lavender. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know that she was going to come out like that, but she was a beautiful little Siamese uh, kitten. And then she turned out to be this giant thing. She, she weighs about four <laughs> pounds, but she's just really long. She's got, uh, they tell me that they think she's got Maine Coon in her because she's so big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maine Coons are big. Yeah, but she's not that big. So I'm no. Like, <laughs> but, she doesn't have those ears either. No, she doesn't. Heifer does. So. Yeah. Yep. Well, I I think that's a wrap. Does anybody have anything else to say? I always do. Uh, okay, go for Remember it. My brothers and sisters, you are everything that you see, no exception. So be kind to it, you know, for you are worthy, so so are they. Beautiful. 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 What Thanks, everybody. <laughs> yep. Have Thank a you. great day. Bye.